Welcome to uh, WXBR and Brockton Community Access's coverage of election 2013. Uh, Ron Van Dam and I are here today in the WXBR studios with uh, the first look you'll get at the school committee candidates. Uh, today we have uh, Ward 5 candidates Gwen Knowles and Judy Sullivan who are each going to give a one minute opening statement. Hi, my name is Gwen Knowles and I first would like to say thank you to XBR and BCA for um, hosting this and giving the voters an opportunity to uh, meet the candidates. Um, I'm a lifelong resident for over 40 years in the city of Brockton, um, a um, product of the Brockton public school system. Um, also, my daughter is a product of the Brockton public school system as well. I work in the area of education and um, I'm seeking your support and your vote on Tuesday, November 5th for Ward 5 School Committee. Thank you. Hi, I'm Judy Sullivan, um, a Ward 5 resident. I want to thank uh, WXBR and Brockton Community Access for having this debate, um, and Ron and Mark. I'm running for Ward 5 School Committee to be a voice for Brockton parents, children, and teachers. Also, I'd like to help to make children's school experience positive. I have always had a deep concern for children's happiness. I am a former teacher, nine years in the Holbrook Public Schools and St. Joseph's School in Holbrook. I have been interested in the schools all my life. My husband John and I have raised two children, a girl Erica and a boy Corey in Brockton, and both attended, both children attended Brockton Public Schools until the eighth grade. Then they moved on to the North Fork County Agricultural High School. I have always wanted to run for school committee, but never had the time. Recently I found some time to run, so I decided to run. Uh, presently, I've been religious education coordinator at Christ the King Parish for 17 years. Judy, you just led me into my next question. You have the time to do this. Um, do you know how much time being on the school committee takes with their, their subcommittees and their committees in the PAC meetings? A minute to respond. Okay. I have heard various... Sorry. Go ahead. I have heard various um, stories on that and you know, how much time it takes. Um, I, I have known a couple of people and helped them run on their campaigns. Uh, years ago, Kevin Nolan and James Daly for school committee. Um, so I kind of know the ins and outs of the school committee and when the meetings are and how the subcommittees and things like that. So I'm pretty familiar. Sure, I am um, very familiar in regards to uh, with the meetings. Um, I attended just for a number of years just as um, someone that had a child within the school system. Then I just went on my own because I was just very interested in um, at the policy level and with the subcommittees. And I think that with anything, um, if you're going to put yourself into it, that there's going to be a level of time and commitment that has to definitely go along with it. So the number of meetings um, that, that they would have on the, on the school committee, that would not be anything that I would see as being a problem. And that also you're going into it knowing that there is going to be a level of commitment that you do have to have with it. Is there anything on the school committee or involved the school committee that you find is not to your liking that you wish to change specifically? In the area of violence prevention is something that is very important to me. So I would just like to see that being able to be increased. I know that there's a, a level of things that um, happen, particularly within like um, at a younger age for um, the students in Brockton or the young people, but I would like to see it increase to include all the students and not necessarily even those that are just um, behavioral management um, or at risk along those type of lines because violence, much like um, anything, when it happens, it affects us all, whether we're directly related with it or not. So definitely along the area to have violence uh, prevention awareness increased. Okay. Okay. Um, I think the schools in Brockton are very strong. Uh, they do a great job in Brockton. I would like to strengthen the policies that are already in place. The most important issues in the schools, I think, are the increasing the graduation rate, increasing the performance rate of our students, and decreasing the disparity between the ethnic and the economic groups, and number one, safety. Judy, I'll start with you. Uh, two minutes to tell us why why you're actually running for this seat. You said you wanted to run for it before. Okay, I touched upon it a bit in my opening statement. 
that I wanted to be a voice for Brockton parents and students um, and strengthen the policies that are already in place. Um, also, um, I, uh, the last part of the, on the opening statement, I didn't get to. I, I have Leave a, it right in. I have a lot of background in working with children and families. Um, I have been a Ward 5 resident for 31 years. My past volunteer experience is a Brockton Girl Scout leader for 10 years. That's how I met you in the parades. I was a PTA president at the Ashfield School for six years. And I was also on the East Junior High School Improvement Council for four years. I am an Albert Baroncelli Award recipient in 2006 from my con contribution to the volunteerism in the schools with the children and families. I'm running for school committee. Um, my platform states about home school community. In home, uh, really increasing parental involvement um, with school, helping schools um, become more community centered. And with community, having the community um, supplement as well as complement what's going on between the home um, and schools. Schools and parental involvement is a lot different from when I was in school. My mom was home every day when I came home from school. Um, that's something that's different now. There's a lot more working parents, but they still need to be very much involved in their child's academic development. Research has shown that more involved that parents are with their child as they're developing in school, that they'll succeed better. So I want to really be able to um, help parents. And there is um, a special interest that I do as being a single mom um, in helping single moms as well. My daughter, as I said, is a product of the Brockton Public School Systems. She's now presently in a master's program at Northeastern University. And that's not just by design. I had to be involved in, in having those things happen. And I had to be involved twice as much as being just the sole parent. Um, I've been very involved within the Brockton community. Um, I was a co-chair of the Brockton Peace Crusaders. Again, violence is something that is important to me. Um, as a product of the Brockton Public Schools, I am very much aware of how um, fantastic our school system is, and also that there is a degree of being able to help our elementary schools um, get to a point that they need to be with MCAS preparation as well. Um, I had the pleasure of being on the task force of two of Mayor Belzati's task force for violence as well as neighborhood stabil stabilization. Uh, Brockton is where I live. It's where I love and um, I'm just looking to be, again, someone to um, make a difference. What about your personality? What aspect of your personality lends itself to being on the school committee? If you have ideas and visions, how do you actually make them, make those known to the rest of the committee? How do you convince them that your ideas are viable? Okay. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> well, it's important um, in regards to well, when you're trying to implement something. Um, you can't just come in there. You need to see what is already um, going on. There's already members of the school, school committee that have been there a while, so they're much more familiar with policies and process than myself. So I think you come in, see what's going on. And then you try and see where there um, is a need. Now, again, when I'm talking about the area of violence prevention, there are already some things that are happening within the school. So some of the things that I might be talking about um, can just supplement or, or enhance already uh, what is going on within the school. Um, I have a very collaborative um, personality in regards to uh, in working with people. Um, and I, I'm a guidance counselor. So I, I work with the team and knowing, um, and, and not just even within this, the education, but in, in any of community groups or anything that I've been in as well. Okay. Um, my personality, I've been working with, like I said, children and families for since 1978 when I graduated from college and the various um, things that I mentioned earlier. Um, I find it very easy to work with parents and children because as long as you communicate and things are, you know, out there, then it's pretty easy. People are pretty open as long as you stay positive. 
And I've been doing that at Christ the King for 17 years with families with their children's religious education. And before that, when I was a teacher. Okay. Um, I would strengthen the policies already in place by working with my fellow school committee members and the mayor and the superintendent. You both talked about your experiences in school systems, in CCD, in the community, in guidance and everything. Take a little more time to do that. Okay. My life experience dealing with children, I've always been involved with them. Ever since I was a little kid, first grade, I told my mother I wanted to be a teacher. And that's just what I did. And I have a deep concern for children's happiness. Um, my educational background includes a Bachelor of Science in Early Childhood Education from Bridgewater State College in 1978 and Associates in Arts and Liberal Arts from Quincy Junior College. Within my church, um, I am the College Outreach Coordinator, so I work with um, young people in the area of um, college readiness, specifically um, in that area. Um, I worked for um, 14 years within um, Brockton High with support programs. I work with the Massachusetts Education Opportunity Program through Massasoit Community College, and then also la um, later on with the Upward Bound Program. And both of those programs are about develop developing students and um, college enrichment and career readiness. Um, and I worked with the families as well to make sure that they supported. Um, that was a must because I couldn't have students in the program without having the support of the parents. And I'll never forget at one event um, when I had a senior that was graduating and her mom had recently had a stroke. And when her daughter got her award, the mom wanted to come up to the stage. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't want her to because I knew her condition, but she wanted to come and thank me. And she dragged her leg and through slurred speech, told me that she loved me to thank me for working with her child and helping. And I know uh, right now that child is um, completing her nursing degree. Okay, next question is Ron's. Assuming that parents are interested in their children's education mm -hmm. uh, and that they showed up to school committee meetings, mm -hmm. do you believe that they should have a certain amount of time allotted at every meeting for parents to speak and voice their concerns? Maybe Gwen first. Um, I do. I think that, that during the time when they have the um, beginning three minutes when they allow um, the visitors to be able to speak, I think that there should be some type of time for, for parents to be able, and it might not necessarily have to be a number of parents. Again, that's why we have the liaisons and the, the PAC presidents at the, at, the, um, at the different schools, but they should be able to be the representative and voice for the parents within the different wards at the schools. I definitely think that that should, would be a nice added bonus to the school committee meetings. Okay, and same question uh, for Judy as well. Um, I think parents get a lot of chances to be, you know, get out there and, and let themselves be heard with, um, as Gwen said, the PTAs and the improvement councils that are held in the schools and also the Brockton Community Schools has uh, their own separate meeting and you can send a representative from your school to that meeting and be a voice for your school. So the individual schools can all send a representative and I think that um, at the school committee meetings, I think they have a lot of business, but I think they do presently have time for people to make statements or present ideas. Um, I would like to see parents get more involved in their, some parents. We have a lot of parents that are very involved, but I would like to see more parents as involved as the parents we have involved in their children's education. Because as Gwen said, um, it, it's paramount that they're involved for their child to succeed. My knowledge in the schools and having sent two kids through the Brockton school system as well, um, there is a lot of parental involvement at the elementary school level. It starts to dwindle at the middle school level and it is not as existent at the high school level unless your kids are into sports or band. Okay, the parent-teacher organizations, they're not, they might be PTOs, PTA, every, they keep changing the names. Um, wh what would you do to, to get more parents involved at the middle school and the high school level? And I will start with Judy. Okay, at the middle school and high school level. 
Okay. Um, I think the schools give parents plenty of chances to be involved. Um, I think we need more parent involvement, a lot more. Um, how I would get them? Offer them food. <laughs> to, uh, I don't know. Get them to the... They have um, parent liaisons in each school. I'm not sure if they still have them today. They did when my kids were there. That uh, communication, you know, that's key. I mean, if you're communicating and the parents, a lot of schools have the boards out front, whereas they're telling their parents, you know, this fundraisers are going on. Uh, communication is, is the key for that, I think, to get parents more involved. Have activities that are of high interest to the students and the families. When the families see their children involved in something, it gets them involved. Okay. And I'll reset the clock again, and we'll start out again with what? Um, a lot of the parents that are involved are already involved. Mm -hmm. It's really being more trying to reach those uninvolved parents. Those that don't take the time to come to the school, maybe for only if their child has a discipline problem. So, um, kind of when I was talking about having the schools be a little more community-centered, under the previous superintendent, I had a conversation about um, a school in Randolph, Virginia. Um, it's the Wednesday Morning Moms, where the, because they have a high Spanish-speaking population, and those students' parents, once they drop their children off at school, they go into the school in another door, and they go into the library and learn about the school, what their child is doing in school so that they can help advocate for them. And they learn in their native <coughs> language. They learn how to read the report card. They learn um, how to play some math strategy games. And I think it's a pilot program that they are doing something similar at the Huntington. So looking maybe to expand that. Let's say that there, is, there are people watching this who are going to vote and they don't know either of you and not to stir any controversy, but why would one vote for one of you as opposed to the other? Okay, and I'm trying to remember who started first last time. I think, I think it was Judy. Judy, Judy yeah. so Gwen, the, Gwen first. Well, this venue um, will give people the opportunity. I mean, you can see signs, and you might see something here or there, but hopefully this is giving people the opportunity to... Um, to make, a, to make a conscious choice, to make an intelligent choice in regards to who that they best feel would represent a Board 5 for a school committee. Um, I would like it to be myself, as Judy would like it to be her. And hopefully through these questions um, and visiting my website, also having the, the opportunity to be at other venues that, that people will have the choice to be able to, to look. Nothing's guaranteed until November 5th. And again, I would definitely like it to be me, and it's up to the voters if that is something that happens. Okay. Um, well, I previously stated that I have been working with children and parents for a lot of years. Um, I am a former teacher, and I have the um, background both personally and professionally to get the job done. Um, I would like to the people to vote for me because I've been involved with children and families for many years in Brockton. There are different ways to communicate to uh, parents and to students. Um, there's newer technological ways, there's um, media outlets. What would you do specifically to communicate to parents to let them know what's going on in the school system other than being at the school committee to represent them and go into the PAC meetings? I would say maybe newsletters. Um, you know, even though, you know, I think, I think sometimes that just gets put aside when a lot of papers come home. Um, have your own Ward 5 meeting, you know, with residents of Ward 5 about the schools and gather ideas of, of what are parents looking for from the schools? How can we help them? Um, so it would be like a, a meeting that you would have in your ward, probably at one of the schools, and, um, and get their ideas that way, because they may be afraid to come to the PTAs because they might think they have to do something if they come. Mm -hmm. 
So they don't want to, they don't want to give, they already are stretched out people today with time and families bringing up their children. So I would say that would be something I don't think has been tried in the past is a Ward 5 meeting with parents for the, both the schools. Okay. And same question for Gwen. Sure. Well, I know that there's like joint meetings that happen between um, the city council and the Ward 5 uh, school representative. But the Ward 5 school committee person could have their own meetings. And if parents aren't willing to come to the school, then I think that um, that person needs to be willing maybe to go to the parents. There are a number of housing um, complexes that are within Ward 5. They have um, like little community halls that a meeting could be set up there um, as much like it is if um, Muhammad won't go to the, if the mountain wouldn't come to Muhammad, then Muhammad would go to the mountain. They might not, if they're not coming to the school and their child is right in the school, mm -hmm. then they might not necessarily come for a meeting. So if you're in an area that they're familiar with, um, their surroundings, and being willing um, to go there to host a meeting, I think that that's something that could be tried as well. Have there been any decisions handed down by the school committee in the past that you're aware of that you disagreed with? Mm, I'm trying to think. Not anything that's been of significance that had me in an uproar, that had me pulling <laughs> out my hair mm -hmm. saying I totally disagreed with that, so no. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, I do feel as though um, our past superintendent, Matt Malone, was treated unfairly mm -hmm. by the school committee. Um, I, I don't believe that you have to be a, a Brockton resident to be our superintendent. We had Joseph Bajan years ago who did an awesome job. And um, I know some people didn't like Mr. Narumako, but I thought he did a great job too. I mean, our schools are strong. And, and it has to be because of the superintendents and all the administration and the teachers working together. Um, so I, I, I feel as though Kathy Smith will do a great job, and she is from Brockton. So, um, but I, I, it really perturbed me the way the school committee handled Matthew Malone. It really did. In, in the sense of the residency? Uh, yeah, and, and just seemed to be hara maybe harassing him. I don't know if that's okay to say, but I did feel that you way. Can say whatever you want. That's why it's an open. That's why it's an open. Uh, Am I yeah. able to go back? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. When do you agree with that? I think that there was a level of, um, you know, dislike for him, and it was quite obvious. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't hidden. Um, there was no behind the scenes. And let's go out and have a united front. It was quite obvious that um, he was disliked. Um, I think that there were ideas that um, I know that I was impressed in regards to going to school committee and had went and um, and I have sat up there when Joe Bage was there as well as Buzz and never had them come out of their seat and say, hi, how are you? I mean, not very many minorities go to, I think I was, me and my friend were the only two sitting up there. But he made a point to come over, Matt Malone did, and say, hi, how are you folks doing? And that is something that had never happened before. And yeah, I do think that there was a little, a, a little bit of personality conflicts that weren't always in his favor. And Judy, just in fairness, because we're going back and forth, is there anything else you want to say in that regard? Um, I don't understand what it was from that they were against him because he, I mean, first day of school, he was in the schools. He, he was, you know, a, a voice, he was present for the kids. I mean, you don't have that many superintendents the first day of school. They go into the schools and, and go to more than one school and get right down there with the kids. And to me, he's Secretary of Ed right now for the state, so. Right. But you both understand that he signed contract with the residency. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah, the residency. I know. I, I'm not sure I'm for okay. residency, but I don't know if that's okay to say either. But no, I'll ask you a question. So, so you're not sure about that? If you're, if, if I, I think we that. can get good people that aren't residents okay. too. I mean, it's been proven with Joseph Beige. Right. And Glenn, how do you feel about that? Um, I'm for residency. I am. Mm -hmm. 
School committee has a very elaborate structure of subcommittees. They have a lot of meetings. Um, they meet the first two weeks of the month, from what I understand, are like a train wreck. There's a subcommittee meeting every other night. There's a PTA or PAC meeting every other night. Um, do you feel that the issues should all be discussed in subcommittee or do you feel that they should be discussed at the school committee? The subcommittee meetings aren't on TV. Mm -hmm. The school committee meetings are on TV. Just, just an opinion if you have one. And Judy first. Okay, I think there are probably certain issues that need to be discussed behind closed doors before the committee can come together uh, as one unit. So I do feel as though they do need those times and I'm, I'm not sure if it's, you know, the subcommittees are, there's a certain uh, policy that they have to have those. I'm not sure yet because I haven't been on the school committee yet. But um, I do feel as though a small group needs to come together before they come together as one to present the ideas so they can be stronger. It's communication, get people's ideas. Um, okay, same question for Gwen. Sure, um, and I agree in regards to the fact that, that there's um, small meetings that they do have to have among themselves, and um, whether or not it, it comes out to the masses, you know, that's a decision that's made um, among them, but um, I don't think that everything does, because again, if you're still trying to get clarity around it, um, you don't like to jump out in information too early when there's no decisions that are made, so I think that is something that it has to be decided among the committee. Okay, thank you. I was just uh, given the cue that we're at the two-minute closing statements, and like I said, I was going to reverse the order, so um, Judy would be first for a two-minute closing statement. Okay, first of all, I'd like to thank Ron and Mark for having this debate, and WXBR and BCA. Um, as I said previous, I've been working with children and families all my adult life. My background, both professionally and personally, shows I have the experience in working with children and families. I would like to be a voice for the parents and teachers in Ward 5. They can contact me anytime with their concerns about the schools and I will work with them and present their concerns before the school committee. I would ask parents, what kind of things are you looking for from the schools? How can the schools help you today? How can families work most efficiently with teachers and administrators so everyone has a successful school year. And on November 5th, I asked Ward 5 residents for your vote for Judy Sullivan for Ward 5 School Committee. Okay, you have another minute. Are you good? We're good. Okay. I just wanted to say one more thing about the uh, residency. If we say that the superintendent has to have residency, then our past superintendents all those years, jo Joseph Page was 10 years here. What are we saying? We didn't get anything done in 10 years or for the other superintendents, what, what kind of, how did the schools come forward in, in those years, okay, if we didn't have those people? Okay, and I'll reset the clock for two minutes, move the arm, and Gwen, you have two minutes. Sure, and again, in closing, I would again like to thank Mark and Ron, uh, BCA and XBR, uh, for hosting this um, meeting of the candidates. Um, on Tuesday, November 5th, I am asking voters um, that you vote me in for Ward 5 School Committee um, as being a product of the Brockton Public School System. Also, as being someone who's been out in the community, uh, working with um, all aspects of our community, and then also in the area of being an educator. I feel that those two things are positive uh, for me to be able to bring to the school committee. And I am seeking your support and your vote earnestly on Tuesday, November 5th. Um, please visit my website. It's vote for the number 4 gwencom so that you can have a chance to, again, to get to know me a little better. I hope that you have the opportunity um, today. And again, on Tuesday, November 5th, I seek your vote for Ward 5 School Committee. Thank you. And any final comment that you still have a tiny bit of time? No? Okay, I'm going to close this then, stop doing the clock.
uh, for WXBI Radio, Ron Van Dam, Mark Lindy from Brockton Community Access. Thank you to both of the candidates in Ward 5 for being here and being so agreeable. And you will get to see more election coverage on both media outlets over, uh, all the way through November 5th. Thanks for watching.